morning facebook how are you lovely people doing i'm coming on here to start some ish today oh, that's every day isn't it in my own unique way so i titled this video most of women are too weak to be entrepreneurs yep i said it and it, this is stimulated because i saw a memory that popped up that says your strong desire you know to be out of your situation doesn't negate the need to do the work. And I was like, ooh, let me go check the rest of my memories. Hey, how you doing, sir? And see what else popped up. And so I did this video that said that entrepreneurship was not going to become easy just because you were a woman. And so, hey, Kami, I see you too. Um, and so I was talking about Eric Thomas. Eric Thomas is somebody I used to listen to a whole lot when I first started my journey, I, I was really gravitated towards his energy, his no nonsense, his, his character and being sold out, you know, on his vision. And one of the things that I recognize is the fact that even though he has a, a predominant male audience, he has a lot of women that like me that follow him too. And that line up with his mindset. And the thing that I never have, I've never seen him do this. And I know I never will. And if I'm wrong, somebody correct me. Eric Thomas has never been in the middle of what I will call one of his rants where he's sitting there talking and he's like, you know, in order to be part of the one percenters, you got to get up. You got to do what other people won't do. You got to be sold out and get up earlier. Da, 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 da. You got to sacrifice. And, you, he, and then say, but hold up, ladies, 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 ladies. Now for you, it's going to be a little bit different. You know, and so with your natural nurturing spirit and, you know, your need to go do some yoga and exercise some self-care, yours is going to be a little bit different. So I understand, you know, if you got a situation with your husband and your kids and you're trying to homeschool and so on and so forth, it, there's an easier way for you. Never seen him do it in all the days of my life. Matter of fact, I've never read a book by any man that they when they were talking like the classics whether that is john c maxwell or dennis kimbrough you know i've never seen any of them say here's the version of entrepreneurship for a woman you you let me know if you've seen that and 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 then i'll, I'll correct myself because at the end of the day this journey is going to require you to deal with so much of your own shit that it's ridiculous. Entrepreneurship isn't difficult because you have to have stacks on deck to invest thousands and thousands of dollars into coaches or hundreds and hundreds of dollars that turn into thousands of dollars. Entrepreneurship is difficult because in order for you to succeed, you have to get your shit together. And so if you come into this place where you're like, I'm thinking more like a job, I just need to find something else to do in order to be able to make me some money. And if I just could find the magic pill to create a sequence of events, then I can just take these steps every day and then I'll get paid. Then you're in the wrong, you're in the wrong category. That's an employee mindset that go to college and then go into a place where they do paid training. See, there's no paid training for your entrepreneurial journey. Nobody's going to pay you to teach you how to be you. Nobody's going to pay you to teach you how to tap into your gifts. Nobody's going to pay you in order to open up your greatness and potentially take them out of business. You say, girl, no, nah, ain't nobody doing that. Entrepreneurship has a particular muscle. Everybody ain't willing to, ain't everybody ain't willing to train. No. And so it's funny. I had another, um, post that I saw in my memory today. And last year I put up this post and it said that, you know, I'm going out of business and I did that on purpose. And so I just went through and I was saying all of this stuff about how, you know, I can't find anybody that wants to invest in my products or services. You know, everybody, you know, keeps on telling me that they don't have money, that they love me and that I'm inspiring, but they never can invest in how I cried and told my husband that this couldn't be what God had for me. He couldn't have possibly wanted me to become a coach because it just wasn't going my way. And I was crying more so because I was saying that I wanted to quit. 
not because of what was happening, because it really hurt me to say that I wasn't going to do this thing that I know that I was put on the earth to do in the first place. Hey, Mama Carrie. And so when him and I were having our conversation and just what he told me was, you know, when 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 life hits you hard, smack that bitch back. And I got up and, you know, wiped my snot off my, you know, my nose and, you know, dried my eyes and got back out there and got to work. But what I had to realize is that because I hadn't stepped into a place of worthiness, I was speaking to people that weren't worthy of my time. How, you know, that's something that's, that's a, that's a very simple thing. A lot of you all, you complain because, you know, you get out here, you market your products and services and people keep on telling you no. That's because you haven't raised yourself to a vibrational level to understand that the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you bring to the table and the way that you could bless somebody else is so radically transformational that you still keep on having conversations with people who don't really give a, don't, don't, don't give a damn about life, don't want to make the changes. You're hoping that you can get somebody that's just as low as you to want to do, to finally want to make a change. Whereas when you really step into entrepreneurship, you have to embody what you already see yourself as being. When I began to embody the fact that I was brilliant, when I began to embody the fact that I'm a mogul, when I began to embody the fact that I'm a beast and I'm going to be everything I want to be, hey, Miss Jessica, guess what? I came out here and I started speaking differently on my videos and I stopped speaking to freebie seekers. A lot of you all don't want to admit it. The reason why you keep getting hit with people that don't really want to pay is because you're still talking to people that don't want to pay you because you don't think you're worthy enough to speak to the people who want to. That's the kind of stuff that entrepreneurship does to you. Is it, you know, you spent your entire life like waiting on somebody to tell you when you're ready, when you're ready to graduate from kindergarten and go to elementary, when you're ready to go from elementary to go to junior high, when you're ready to go from junior high to go to high school, whether or not you're considered, you know, to be an honor student, you know, whether or not you're worthy enough for someone to put a stamp of approval on you and give you this degree, whether or not you are skilled enough because somebody said you went through their trade program and they gave you certification. And so you can keep on waiting. But see, in entrepreneurship, nobody's going to tell you you're ready. I'm not anti-certification. But women, this is one of the areas where you're weak at. Men will go out here with a wrinkled ass shirt on and an idea and don't even have their stuff together and be selling you on a pipe dream. And they will go out there and they will talk like that thing is go, you know, the, the, the best things, the next best thing since sliced bread. And they swag alone will get people to pay them money. You will have more skills than them and go and feel that you need to have another certification. Do you realize that going to school to get a certificate, to get certification and become a life coach is not gonna help you be an entrepreneur? It may help you with your processes because some of you all know you want to help people, but you don't really know how. But if you tapped into the right coach, they would show you that you have your own process. When I started life coaching, I didn't have, I, and I did not, and I will not go to anybody's certification program to tell me that I know how to coach people in, on, in life. I was doing that long before then. And so when you do those things and you come against those hardships and you don't have that wherewithal within and you don't have that trust and knowledge in yourself, then guess what? You begin to get weak. See, life coaching and certification programs, and I don't care what it is, healing, yoga, all of that stuff, it may give you education in a trade, but it's still not going to help you understand how to market it. And marketing, it still ain't going to be no good for you, even if you pay somebody to try to circumvent the system and cheat because they can put the stuff... In they can put the stuff out there, but that doesn't mean that it's going to attract your audience. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Kimberly. It's like this woman that I know that works in, it works in the financial sector. Now, she wants to get a website done. She could easily just have a website out there that's going to do what? You know, helping you, you know, build wealth and then have her little sections. You know, do you want to look in, in annuities or investing or savings? Do you want to protect your assets, insurance? But that's not going to speak to the essence of who she is. That's not going to help her attract her ideal client. And she has a natural passion to want to change the black community and wants to reach out to more African-Americans. And she knows that there's a lot of stuff that's rooted in systemic racism and post-traumatic syndrome from what our ancestors went through with slavery. Then guess what? Her website needs to say what she knows that she is. 
that she's a generational curse breaker and a generational wealth builder. And she needs to have that in bold words on her website. So as soon as somebody like me come on, I'll be like, well, damn, okay. Is this how we do what we do? <laughs> and, and then keep reading. Then she needs to share her story of all of the stupid mistakes that she made and then how she transformed her life and the things that she's done for other people and then speak about the need for black wealth and maybe speak about the bombing in Oklahoma and stuff like that. And, and when doing that taps into her genius, it taps into her ideologies, it taps into her principles. And see, that's what entrepreneurship is about because a lot of people are out here and they are coaches. But nobody talks about the coaching experience and the build the entrepreneur experience the way that August Crenshaw does. How many, you know, and even when they do, they don't have my tonality. There's somebody out there, I get it. You don't like the way I say the stuff that I say because I sound like I'm a little too rough or I'm too hard. Part of it is just the fact that I already got bass in my voice. The second part is that I happen to like to rant and sometimes yell. The third part might be because I like to cuss and I really could care less why nobody wants to listen to me. But at the end of the day, I come out here and I speak the truth to the principles that I believe. I used to not do that, y'all. I speak about authenticity and showing up as who you are because I understand because I watched myself go through the transformation. I used to do my videos and I used to be a little bit nervous because some of the people that were connected to me from my previous church that I thought that I still had real relationships with were following me. So when I would come out here and I would want to tell women that they could do anything, I would be like, look, you know, you got to you got to trust God and believe and you got to keep the faith and faith and you got to persevere and you got to go forward no matter what. But that wasn't the way that I wanted to say it. See, for if so me cussing, let's just make sure I get this clear because I need you all to understand authenticity. And this is where many of you all are weak and why you will not survive in this. I just happen to use cuss words and I have all my life. And I used to listen to people say that people that, you know, they're not intellectually savvy, that their vernacular is weak, you know, they have low vocabulary. That's why they cuss. No, there's just certain things that I like better. Sometimes I like to say, could you be quiet, please? Other times I would like, I prefer to say, look, I really would just like you to shut the fuck up. And I don't have to be yelling and I don't have to be angry. I like the emphasis. I like colorful words. They, 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 they're, they're great descriptors to me. That's just what I do. But I withheld that I withheld that side of me because I was too worried about who I would or would not offend in the church. And guess what? Those people that I was no longer around when I moved from my city, they're not Team August. They're not. And many of you all, because you weak, you still trying to appease people. They don't really care about you like that. Thank you, Queen. The people that you're trying to appease, they don't really like you like that. Do you know? I'm going to give you an example. So after leaving St. Louis, after being gone for three years, because Hurricane Harvey hit, when we decided to go to St. Louis so we wouldn't be in the city because we didn't know how bad it was going to be, I stayed at my mother-in-law's house and they did what they do these things that they call cell groups. And they do the cell groups and what it is is they basically have Bible studies in different people's homes. I used to be a part of this cell group. You know what I'm saying? We used to call ourselves CB4. You all, any of y'all seen the movie? And that's what it was. What I did one day is while they were in the basement, I would set myself in the kitchen. I positioned myself like I was working because I just wanted to see what would happen when these people who knew that we were back happened to finally see me. And they all kind of came upstairs and looked. Some of them even didn't say hi. One of them thought for like two seconds and then say, oh, can I have a hug? The only person who actually walked up to me immediately and gave me a hug was the one who thought I used to get on her nerves because I always had something to say when I was in church. None of that. Oh, my God, August, we haven't seen you in years and we're so happy that, you know, did you lose anything in the hurricane? None of that. And these supposed to be good ass Christian people. I was worried about not cussing and offending them and ain't none of them got no intentions of doing anything or centered around what I'm doing. None of them have any intentions in investing in anything that I have to offer. And the one person that did and does proudly watches my videos no matter what. And there is literally just one.
But the day that I started speaking and saying what was really on my heart and saying, you know what, you a damn hypocrite if you say that you believe in God, but then you want to be an entrepreneur and you don't have faith that you're going to make it. How are you going to sit here one day and tell you that you received a promise and an epiphany and had a dream and you got out here and started doing what you were doing, but now, but because it didn't happen the way you wanted to happen, you quit. What happened to all them scriptures you used to quote about the, the, the race not being given to the swift and the strong, but to the one that would endure to the end? You didn't believe any of that shit that you said. You was just in church faking instead of actually being out here being a real believer. Now it's time to show that you a believer. Now it's time for you to stand up. Now it's time for you to do what the scripture said. If the Israelites had to fight in the war to get to the promised land, why in the world you don't think that you got to fight too? That's some bullshit. And I started talking like that because that's what I thought and that's what I felt and that's what I believe. And you know what I attracted? A bunch of non unorthodox Christians, a bunch of people that said, you know what? I believe in God and I decided to get out of the box and to get out of that sin consciousness and stop believing that I couldn't achieve some just because I'm not fucking perfect. And then I got my tribe. That takes strength, ladies. This is why I'm saying many women are too weak to be entrepreneurs because you feed into that we're natural nurturers. Well, if you're a natural nurturer, then you nurture yourself first. You do what you need to do to make sure that you feel good and that you are at peace with your own well-being. Because if you're too busy nurturing everybody else, that's not really nurturing. That is a lack of self-worth and that is a plea for any kind of fucking love that you can get your hands on. When you truly step into this call, you realize that there's something that you do in a way that nobody else will ever do it. And you scream your voice like a trumpet and you speak to the truth until your tribe finally can hear you through the noise. You can't be heard through the noise because you're still saying, I help women lose weight. I help women lose weight. Well, maybe what you really need to be saying is, listen. Let me tell you something. It's about time that you re retired a fat bitch from off your body. That's who I am. I'm that coach that is sitting here saying to the sister that wants to get the brick house back, that you can get it back as soon as you quit abusing yourself. Oh, yes, I said it. You abusing yourself. And until you learn to love yourself and you believe you worthy of living instead of you used to, and, 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 until you do that, you don't get your tribe. How many of you know that obese, that this, this, let me tell you something. I already know this, that when I'm in the middle of doing these rants, especially when I start speaking to specific, to specific um, fields in, 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 in entrepreneurship, that I'm literally giving you game. You like, you getting, you getting two seconds of a blurb of a coaching second session. So many of you all are so busy saying that you're in health and fitness when what you really need to be saying is that look at the end of the day, all I'm looking for is women that are willing to say, you know what? I went from being radically suicidal to progressively suicidal because that's what a lot of overweight women are. Women that are sitting there thinking to themselves, you know, I want to be back in that body that I was in, but still keep shoving a, a cupcake down their throat and some chips down their throat when they know it should be some damn broccoli or some cauliflower or whatever the hell, something different. They go through those radical thoughts of like, you know what, maybe I'm just supposed to die with a fat body. I know I got diabetes in any day that it could kill me, but they lose a sense of self-worth. But if you don't start speaking to that and saying, listen, I know what you're thinking because you tried this diet, that diet, and it didn't work. Or maybe it did for the first six pounds and then you didn't lose anymore. And you found yourself, you went from spending a whole week fasting you then another week only eating fruits and vegetables to the third week taking your ass to the store, sitting down, binge watching something on Netflix, eating fucking cupcakes and goddamn potato chips all day long. And not on. that's the reason why you went from losing five pounds to gaining 15, not because you didn't know, because you literally began to feed yourself all the shit you weren't supposed to have. See, when your copy begins to say that, then the woman that's looking at it feels convicted. And then it's your responsibility to educate her without giving away all your strategy to let her know that this is where she is and this is where she needs to be. But you're the person with the genius to teach her the science behind the food in order to be able to get her to where she needs to be so she can finally feel some damn hope.
instead of you inboxing every damn person on Facebook or tagging 98 people talking about try my tea, do you want to lose weight and putting pictures up and then thinking somebody's supposed to magic magically click your fucking link. That is not being an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is a creator. It is a person that has decided to jump into the divine thing that God has given them and walk in the unique purpose and do it. But you won't do what I just said. You want to know why? Because you don't want to sound too rough. It might be that you got too many um, love and light people around you. You got too many people that are, um, you know, I think that when you speak that you, you, you should have a more calm tone. You, let me tell y'all something. A lot of y'all, this, this, this is wisdom here. A lot of you all, and this comes naturally with African-American women. Not all of us are like this because I got some that's got a more mellow spirit than me. But there is a level of, 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 of there's a, there's, we, we project when we speak. And, and we speak with so much passion that a lot of times what people like to use against us is, oh, my God, oh, my God, there she goes again, as if. Me saying the word bitch in this tone means any different than Becky saying bitch. So somewhere along the line, some of you all don't even want to speak up. You, you, I don't care about ranting. I rant and my voice go, you can tell what's happening with me spiritually. Do you know how many people used to try to tell me that me speaking this way meant that I'm agitated or that energetically something's wrong with me and that I need to calm down and I need to woosah? No, what you feel to realize is that I understand that when I get into this place right here, that the person that's on the other side of this that's listening is absorbing all of it. See, I, everybody's not built the same. And some of these people that study so many spiritual modalities, they want to tell you what's going on. Do you know that I understand that when I get into this zone, that I am energetically, after going through meditation, after reading, after soaking in, after getting poured into by other people, that overflow has to come out of me? And so I guess some of y'all got like a little trinket of an overflow to come out like a tea glass instead of like a big ass hose going into a teapot. So this is an overflow energetically going to every woman that's sitting there saying, I don't have the money right now to hire August. I'm in limbo and I'm confused about whether or not I should hire August. I got too much shit going on. I've already invested in somebody else. And this is me saying, here is your dose of motivation for the day. This is what gets you through. Through, and this is the power that gets you to believe. And so my influx in energy is not because something or someone has a negative hold on me. It's because I realize that I am letting you borrow power. I am transferring it for a season. You can't build entrepreneurship off of that. You eventually got to tap into your own abilities, but we all for a season need to lean on somebody for a second. And then I woosah and I ground and I get filled back up. But we're so busy trying to be proper, polite and poised and say things in a way that looks professional. We're so busy trying to do things in a manner in which somebody will accept them and you're slowly killing yourself. And this is why you will be too weak to survive as an entrepreneur because you ain't saying it the way that it needs to be said because you worrying about people that do not give a damn about you. Because if they did, they would love you where you are. If they did, they would promote you where you're at. If they did, they would give you access to resources and you would never, ever feel like you owe them something on the other side of it. You would realize that you were able to freely receive a wealth of love and help. And so this journey is about authenticity, A-W-E, lead people in awe with who you are. And you need to believe that if you would start doing live video, if you would start putting copy out there, that people that need your help would hang on your every fucking word. And they would ga gradually gather their independence. And so we see a lot of these people out here that, you know, walk around and they got this level of calm. At least that's what you think. I know a whole bunch of people that are into all of that spiritual shit and they talk quietly and they tell you love and light and they say everything is okay. 
but everything is always a fucking problem with them. They're always the ones that, look, I've been around too many of them. You tell them the truth about the shit they did and they don't want to eat it up. And it's so funny. It's so funny because here's something else about me as a coach. When you come to me, there's a natural ability that I have to begin to absorb who you are and personify that thing so that you see it. I hold you up to the standards that you bring to me. And so there are some things that I might say to person A that I would not say to person B because they're in two different playing fields. But I'll see these people and, you know, they'll be, you know, talking all of these things and, you know, this Eastern versus Western mindset and, you know, they own all the time and they practice their shamans and they practice Reiki and, you know, they're vegans and they won't let anything clean, unclean touch their body and all of that shit. But as soon as you critique them as some of the finest slivers of their life, they got a fucking attitude. I, I, I watch them. I watch them all the time. And then they accuse you of being abusive or not being in alignment with the divine. They start saying that, you know, you're trying to label them and some shit like that. Ain't nobody trying to label you. I'm giving you something that was divinely given to me for you to dissect that. And even if in my humanness, I added a slight bit of air to what I said, if I brought something to you, then, and, you, and it irks you that I brought it to you, seek the divine and see what level of elevation you, you, you skyrocket up to. But they don't do that. They don't do that. I only have one healer to this day, to my knowledge, that I've ever worked with that has not ran from me. She's taken a hiatus from being coached by me for whatever reason, and I let that be. But there's not a single, listen to me, there's not a single fucking healer that I've ever worked with that has ever been able to endure the relationship and be able to come back to me and say, okay, even if I don't agree with you, I get the gist and I see what spiritually is happening because these are the people that's always talking about fucking mirrors or what you see is a mirror of who you are. You know, they're, they'll be quick to tell me, no, August, you're acting like this or you feel like this because you got to raise the mirror up at yourself and look at your word. They'll tell you that words matter and what you speak matter and they'll tell you, you should watch what you say and they'll tell you to read all of these big ass highfalutin books that's supposed to elevate you to a place spiritually. But let you call them out on their words or some shit like that and all fucking hell breaks loose. And guess what? Those are the ones that I still see struggling to build their business. So they might bring their ass out here and put a put on the show and make it look like shit is okay. But unfortunately, because I've been the coach behind the scenes, I know shit's not okay. I know who really does have a business that's thriving and they getting fucking commas. I know who's living off their spouse's income. I know who really has a job and that's why they got the quality of life that they really do got. I know who, where they were a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, and to see that they in the same fucking place. And the only thing that they got is an elevation of thought. Ladies, you got to stop doing that shit. You, and when you look at your business from your six months, nine months, one year, one and a half years, two years, when you look at your business and you still keep having this up and down, back and forward, but you keep on coming every year and you got a brand new idea and this is going to be the thing that lands. You haven't fucking elevated. You're still picking that fucking straws. Let me make sure I say it again. When you up and down, back and forth, a little of this, a little of that, you know, you moving forward a little bit, moving back a little bit. And every single year, you're like, this is going to be my year or this is what's going to change. And this time I'm going to launch this program. And this time I'm going to open up this website. And this time I'm going to have this event. And this time it's going to be different. or I'm going to get more people to work with me. And, and you feel like you have you've elevated because your thoughts are higher. Your thoughts are high, but they haven't caught up with your actions and there has been no manifestation. You ain't having no revelation. You putting God or the universe or the, on that shit and you picking at fucking straws, hoping that you find something that works because you still don't believe in your goddamn self. Because when you believe in yourself, you will launch a program four times until a motherfucker buy it. That's what I said. When you believe in yourself, you will keep showing up, doing the same videos, doing the same rants, launching the same programs. The only thing you will do is tweak your wisdom. Maybe you'll market it different. Maybe you'll give it a slightly different title, but the core of your processes and your procedures, they don't change. You don't keep on coming out here talking about you elevated. 
What is that? I'm looking at women and I see them and they come out and be like, yeah, you know, I'm going to start my coaching program. They don't really get that many one-on-one -one clients the next year. Yeah, I'm going to start this massive, you know, academy or this membership program. They don't hardly get five people to sign up for that. Then the next year, you know what? I'm just going to start doing these workshops or this massive live event. And I'm going to pull people in from all over the place. How the fuck you elevating in all these stages, but your business still in the same place? I had people that wanted me to do a live event over a year ago, but I used wisdom and I said what it looks like I have in my business, I don't. Yes, I have steady income. Yes, I have reached a point where I never have to work for anybody else. But I'm able to look at the data and say that if I get out here and promote and I put this out here, that is going to be very difficult because I'm all up in my business. I know my numbers. I know my conversions because I connect with people on the back end. I know how many of you all just admire me for inspirational purposes and ain't never finna spend a fucking dime with me. So why would I go out here and try to get the biggest venue and to host the live event? A lot of y'all do that. Do you know that before I even launched my live event that's coming up in September, I probably had about 15 women that was like, I want to see you live. I want to see you live. And, it, uh, and only like seven of them signed up. All of the rest of them, even though they do the dates in advance. Oh, you know, I don't know. I got to see how this will happen. Only one or two people had a legitimate um, thing that said, you know, this has come up for me and this is an opportunity. So I'm not going to be there. I would rather do that. You don't get to build your business off of promises of people. A lot of y'all, that's the only reason why you be launching programs. You didn't launch the program because you saw the vision. You launched the program because you had a bunch of people co-sign and say that they would buy it. Did you, are you hearing me? That's weakness. That's weakness. You can't survive in business like that. There's a difference in having a tribe that you're serving and you're, and they're telling you what they need and you're making products and creating things for them in real time. Please understand there's a difference, but I'm talking about y'all that can't seem to crack the code. And every other day you offering another program because you are trying to figure out what people will buy. And instead of you just sitting down in that place, and say, but what's the vision? What do I see? How do I see it? How is it supposed to go? And, and resting in that, you all aren't doing that. Because you're too afraid of fucking failing. That's weakness. Ladies, we can't be weak. My community, Authentic Collective, do you all know that I launched it in 2019? I paid a shit ton of money to get all of these plugins through Peep So and bought domains and created my own fucking website on WordPress. And it was gorgeous. The functionality was a little bit off and I moved probably about 35 ish to 60 people there. And I just couldn't get that thing going. I couldn't get it going to save my life. I didn't, I, but I kept telling my, my, my circle, this is what I see. I feel the need to create a network that is not on Facebook. No more Facebook groups. No more getting into any, it, there's a reason why something, there's a sensitivity to the conversations that I need to have with entrepreneurs. I don't have time for fucking Facebook jail. And, I, and it's, things are going to change. I said this shit in 2019. You see how they censoring people because of COVID? But I relaunched it on another platform and it's still growing and the vibe is still coming but i see i'm proud of every fucking little thing i do my academy has 10 members when i hosted my last summit over there 86 fucking women signed up and 81 percent of them actually converted and took their ass into the group and some of those women have now converted and are interested in speaking in the next summit that's coming up in august because I didn't stop and I held to the vision. I didn't go and consult with anybody and say, should I do it? I said, this is what has to be done. And then accepted any wisdom that was given to me to prevent potholes or to, you know, expand on the vision from a creative standpoint to make sure that I was leaning in to who I am. If you're not leaning in to who you are, you're weak. And entrepreneurship is going to choke you up. It's not the steps and the processes. You need that so that you can get out of your head.
You need someone like me to help you understand ideal client. You need someone to help you understand how you structure and price your products and services. You need someone like me to teach you how to properly create posts that sell. You need someone to teach me, you teach you sales strategy, but not because you're not enough, but because those are technical, practical, foundational skills that you need in business, but you need to get that shit off your mind so that you can tap into your creative uniqueness. That's what you need. Queens, there's no easy version of this journey for you. The entrepreneurial arena is not going to pause because you're a woman. It's not going to say because you need a self-care day. I'm going to make everybody that wants to push the button and buy today, wait and buy tomorrow. When you, sometimes you have to push through the fatigue. See, this is the shit ain't nobody talking about. Those of you that know that I'm on my weight loss journey, when I was out, I had my conversation with my coach last night and she was talking about, yeah, August, you know, this is that week where your body may kind of be like, what are you doing? And this is why the weight may not come off as much. She so said, but you know what? Me and my body gonna have a conversation. And the conversation is, listen here, inside of there is the Brick House August Crenshaw. Now, whatever this fat suit is, since you want to go to war with me and you don't want to leave, I'm going to take your ass to war. And I push like hell. I still haven't gotten back over 10 miles on my bike, but I rode for 51 fucking minutes this morning and did 7.87 miles and I had to push. Legs shaking and shit because I refuse to lose this war against my body any fucking more. Don't you think that sometimes entrepreneurship is going to feel like that? The time when you don't want to press, you're going to need to press, you're going to need to put the offer out, you're going to need to have out the link. And then when it's over with, then you get to woosaw, relax, you get to stretch and make sure that you also relieve yourself. This is not for the, this is not the cakewalk, y'all. And some of y'all don't want to go to war for what you believe in. And until you do, you will not get what you're looking for. So I'm not saying don't do ex self care, but I'm saying sit back and make sure you know what that really is, what that looks like, and don't spaz out and phase out on your business because surrendering to that as a form, because it's becoming a weakness for many of you all, you will not make it in this game. And if you just turn up the heat on who you are, you will begin to realize that this level of energy, for instance, that I'm producing, you can't stop it. People will tell you to slow down. <laughs> They've been telling me that since 2015, as far as this is concerned. I keep turning up the heat. Turn up the heat, queens. This is not the time to be weak. This is the time for you to stand up. You are either going to build in the midst of all of this shit that's going on right now, or you're going to yield. And, and whatever it looks like on the other side with the next level of catastrophic uh, events that come to follow, you won't be able to blame the government. You won't be able to blame the system. You won't be able to blame racism. You won't be able to blame sexism. You won't be able to blame the non-supporters. The only person you're going to have to blame is yourself. And when you're a real entrepreneur, that's what you do any damn way. It's called CEO mentality. That's when the buck stops here and you say, how can I change this? You ask yourself one question, what can I do? And when you know that you've done all that you can, then you do like Donnie McClurkin and you stand. That's when you wait for the miracle. Too many of you all are waiting on miracles for your business. But what you really need to be doing is turning it up. You need to do everything that you can. Because then after you've done that, even, even for those of y'all that are Bible scholars, what does it say? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and spirits in high places. And it says that you're supposed to gird yourself up with the armor of truth and stand. And then the next verse says, start. the verse ends with stand and the next, ver the next verse right after that still says stand. Y'all ain't standing. And not just standing, being still, but standing in your truth and moving forward. That's warfare. Who, who's getting girded up and putting on, on, on army artillery only for you to just not, to not do anything? If you got a girl, if you got to put on the, the, the helmet of truth, you know, a helmet of salvation, if you got to put, you got to, if you got a girl, you got to have a shield of faith, then that means that some stuff going to come at you and you're going to have to still believe. You have to have a sword of truth. That means that when the lot comes to you, you got to slice it. If you're going to have on a helmet of salvation, that means some things going to come at you to make you feel like you're not worthy. You're going to have to know that you is still worthy. 
You if you are, if you're gonna have a little breastplate of righteousness, that means that when some people trying to make you feel like you're not right, you're not ready, that you're gonna have to be able to stand and know you're right already. The battlefield is in the mind. That's why you let your mind be like that, which was like Christ Jesus. That's why you're transformed by the renewing of your mind because you have to renew your stinking thinking. It's a war. And when you change what you think, you change what you say, and you change what you do, and you change what you get. So if you ain't getting what you want, you go back in the mirror. And you look at you, but no more punking out, no more punking out. People that don't like my message, that's cool. You think it's too rough? Cool. Go unfriend me and go follow somebody to tell you the truth. How many of y'all know y'all got people that's going to tell you that your message is off, but they still listen to you? That's because secretly in their subconscious, they want that same thing. Anybody that try to listen to you, but then tell you how you should do it or say, you need to be like, well, why the fuck you attracted to me in the first place? You live in a lie, not me. And so since you're afraid to do what you're supposed to do, you're going to try to get me to do what you think is supposed to be done in the way that you think it's supposed to be done because you ain't walking in your truth. Deuces. Bye. I love y'all. I've been talking to y'all for a minute. Um, let me just go back to the comments real quick. I'm so sorry. I didn't read none of them uh, this uh, morning. I just was, you said a lot of times certification seeking is folks living out imposter syndrome the vast majority of the time. If you still don't hear me. You said cursing is for emphasis. Emphasis is nonverbal communication markers. <laughs> you said, yes, just went through it, but now I'm free, LOL. Not worrying about no apostle or no, ooh, prophet liars. Girl, I didn't been prophet lied to so much. <laughs> yeah, some people prophesy, some people prophet lie. Come on now, I call them that all the time. Lord have mercy. You said, come on with it. Thank you, Queen. While I open up Facebook and this is the first thing I see, come on with it and get it, Cynthia. Get it, get it, get it. Woo. Okay. Hey, Lynn. You say, yes, you must have a foundation then. Tap in. Yes. Turn it up. Right. Why you got to tell me how to talk? Get it, y'all. Get it, y'all. Okay. I love y'all. I'm out of here. Y'all are welcome to come over to aclive.co. That's where Black women are having uncensored conversations about the stuff we're going through. So if I talk like this over here, you can only imagine how I talk over there. Come on and join us. Check it out. We're working on building a community that's ours. Melanie popping. Deuces. <laughs>